Welcome to Pep Talk, everybody. I'm your host, Rosie Peppy Park, coming to you all the way live from Croydon, London. And today's guest is Mr. Peter Honeygale, UK recording artist who has not one, not two, not three, but 17 albums out. Stay tuned. This one is going to be wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming to the show. To be in these places at, at, at the time that. So yeah, I'm in mean, the right place at the right time. Yeah, what's up? I told you this Jamaican accent was going to come up. I'd love to be able to name all the bands, and I can't. We'll get to it. But I know I'm going to... You've been called selfless. You've been called kind, loving, authentic. We know you're passionate about it. Talk about your little 10-month-old son. Yeah. Talk about that. Your private joy. I, I love my son. His name is Jawari, and he was born on Christmas Day. He's one. So, Mr. Honeygale, mm -hmm. that is such a beautiful name. Is that your real name? Yes. Really? It truly is. But, you know, it sounds very um, appropriate for the kind of music that you do for the honeys. For real, for real. I mean, I think I'm just fortunate to have such a, an apt name. It, it goes with what I do, which is Lovers Rock. Mm -hmm. um, and, but trust you me, the, the, the amount of times it's, it's pronounced improperly. Mm -hmm. and, and so I'm, I'm referred to as Honeygale. Mm -hmm. And there's no ing in the name. It's <laughs> honey, you know? <laughs> It's, it's unique and it's beautiful. It rolls yeah. off the tongue effortlessly. Yeah. So tell me a little bit yeah. about your upbringing. Where were you born and that sort of stuff? Right, I was born here in London, South London, mm -hmm. uh, to Jamaican parentage. Mm, right. Though my mum was the main parent in my life. Mm -hmm. And she worked um, hard, you know, for bringing us up. That's me, my elder brother and young sister. We have an elder brother in Jamaica. Um, but the upbringing here was great. It was lovely. I mean, in terms of, yes, yeah, it, it was hard. But I think you had a bit more of a fairer environment, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. the, things wasn't so tough to live by, you know. Uh, nowadays, as most people probably tell you, it's very expensive to live here in the UK. Yes. So you better have something good going on, mm -hmm. you know, or it's going to be difficult. But um, I think I, I had, uh, I wouldn't say average. I, 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 I mean, I think we, we had the same sort of like upbringing right across the board, uh, coming from the West Indian community, mm -hmm. being new settlers here in the mm -hmm. UK, you know, such. Um, and I think we had good times and bad times, you know. Um, in my household, I was born in a time where there was no such thing as reggae, though. It was more scout and blue beat, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I grew up in that, that whole West Indian Jamaican um, cultural background, you know. I mean, that was, you know, I have your dungaree, I have your crepa, I have your thingy, <laughs> marina, and, and them language. I've heard that for a long time. Yeah, well, well, that's, you know, folks being from Jamaica, that's, that's right. the language you're going to grow with. Mm -hmm. And then you have the English school system where you get to understand how England works and whatever. So it's kind of like a diverse background. It was good, it, it has its ups and downs and whatever. But in terms of the music, I, I think it's something that's always been in my blood. Right, I was uh, just gonna ask you, yeah. at what age did you realize that you had a voice that's one? Yeah, that's a good question. And the reason why I say that's a good question because I've always loved the music for as long as I could remember. Mm -hmm. But I didn't actually start singing until when I was in like senior school, secondary school where uh, I think it was listening to the Mighty Diamonds, you know, Mighty Diamonds were my inspirations, you know what I mean? That was the key that unlocked what was inside me, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And um, that's where the, the singing, the, 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 the craft for singing came through. And it was, it was at that point, Tabby Diamond's voice and the Mighty Diamonds, Bunny and Judge as well. And it such a, made such an impression on my life, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of singing, harmony skills. And uh, yeah, it's never left me since. And what age were you? You said secondary school, but I don't know I what was, age was that. I was uh, 15, about, 15. I would have been about, no, ooh, yeah, about 14, 15 about the time, you know. So that would have brought me back to 74, 75. Okay, well, so, you and, I'm not age. giving my <laughs> age away. You can do the listen, math. listen, don't be doing no math. <laughs> I'm 25 next birthday, so... Exactly. I mean, okay, so um, when you started realizing that you could sing, yeah. did you ever really think that you would one day be a recording artist? Was that in the cards for you at that tender age? Yes, because I was musical. Right. I was a musical person. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily singing, but I knew I had a voice. I just didn't use it. Right. You know, I was just more musician. I like to play my bass. But, so before people know me as a singer, 
Uh, I used to play bass for Chosen Few here, mm -hmm. and the yeah. Pioneers, some of the legends in reggae music, and we used to do uh, studio sessions, and we used to play live gigs with them and stuff. And uh, that's what I was doing before my, my, I launched my singing career. Mm -hmm. You know, like I say, the singing wasn't so much of a vocation, but I was still very musical, right. you know, because I play instruments and whatever it is. And um, yeah, I, I think um, I think in terms of like uh, how it, where you start from, you know, it, uh, and then how you perceive your future, because you don't know if it's going to work out. Right. You know? <laughs> I just had one or two songs that I liked that I liked doing, I knew I could sing, and they hit through. Mm -hmm. You know, so I said, okay, I'm going to continue. So I left the band thing and just went on doing my own career, and I'm here today. Right, know. and you do lovers rock. Lovers rock and, and UK reggae. reggae. So why did you choose to do lovers rock? Apart from the name, yeah. apart from the name Honey Gale, which which connotes something to do with lovers. But yeah. why did you really decide to go lovers rock versus something else? We when didn't you were choose. It didn't just, choose. We we was. Well, I, I say we, but I say for myself, mm -hmm. definitely, I was put in that category, category because um, when you look at reggae in the UK, it's termed as love as well. Okay. And also, my, I guess my voice also personifies that type of feeling it's, as well. It's soft, it's flowy and whatever. And I think that's why I was also put in that category. But before love as rock was reggae. Mm -hmm. And this is what we grew up on as well. So it wasn't necessarily, you know, oh my darling, like I was singing Lovers Rock lyrics. Mm -hmm. It was, it was more life. Reggae it was all about life. You'd, you'd, you know, especially come from Jamaica, you'd, you'd get all areas. And plus you'd, you'd get stuff coming from that would have been sort of like copied from the American music scene as well, exactly. where Jamaican artists would mm -hmm. go back and sing some of those songs and stuff. But you'd also, you know, you'd, you'd have a, a wide range of, of, of topical issues coming from Jamaican reggae as well. So that's what I knew. Um, and, and, and certainly some of my later recordings, and, and, and I think all throughout most of my recording career, I'll have topical reggae, not necessarily lovers rock. Okay. So, um, yeah, I was just slotted into a category. And you, and to be honest, it's kind of not, it's not a bad thing, mm -hmm. you know, because if people can't market you, they don't know where to put you, and that's when you're not selling records. <laughs> so it's better, at least if someone can categorize you in something, mm -hmm. at least you've got something to, to start from and to people getting used to you. And then uh, you can sort of like develop your own thing because people know you now. Exactly. You know? And I love it because I heard mm. you sing before and you're going to sing for us again. Okay. But I, <laughs> I want to talk about, you're obviously very young. Thank Even you. though you try to tell us your age. Thank you. you. Really no, this is don't make it further. Thank you. <laughs> but you have 17 albums. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. 17 in the span of your career, mm -hmm. um, talk about the albums, like the first album. Yeah. Tell me about the process that went along with doing that album. Did you write the songs? The whole creative process for one, working with the musicians, you're yeah. a former musician, or, yes. or do you still music? But talk about the whole process for the particular first album, and then we're gonna go back to some of the others. Sure thing. I think the process of, um, and in a nutshell, because it, it can be a long process, I think you develop your first album through your first recordings, your mm -hmm. debut recordings. Because if in my case, you know, I'd done uh, uh, one song that particularly put me on the map and it was a song called Be My Lady. I'd done one or two bits and pieces before, but Be My Lady really helped to establish my name. Mm -hmm. And what happened, well, with me, when, when we first got our first revenue back off of the sales of that record, and when I say we, I mean myself and uh, in actual fact, Commander B's elder brother, Fitzroy Blake, okay. who is, he does the engine, engineering work, like mm -hmm. the mixing, and I do like the music and stuff. And we, we released Be My Lady that came out, made a bit of revenue, mm -hmm. brought the money back in, invested it into another record and kept on going on. And you, you, you find yourself with a small sort of like collection of tunes, four or five tunes, and you think to yourself, it might as well go for an LP. Yeah. And that's how the LP concept gets mm -hmm. born. I'm not, I'm not sure if we actually plan to go out to do that because yeah. we just didn't have that foresight. But because you make these single recordings and then you, you get a collection of, of such, you can put an album together. And our first album was called In This Time, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and it was great. It was, it was a whole new learning curve for me, a great experience. But we had um, manufacturing experience through the singles we had released before. Mm -hmm. So we knew where to get the labels done, the, the mastering done, how to get it cut, get the sleeves done, the UV sleeves. And there was a, a clothes shop 
close by to me at the time, where I always used to buy my, my gear and stuff. <laughs> so he gave me the shop one Sunday just to go on and, and model clothes for the sleeves, you know, and stuff for the front coat sleeves. So that was really great. And it was, a real, it was a real good manufacturing process, you know what I mean? We had to do it that way because we couldn't get record deals. Right, right, so right. Um, we did it that way. And, you know, I, I didn't put my money around my neck or in fast cars or around my wrist. I continued to invest it in the music industry. And that's what went on to, to um, promote other albums we had mm -hmm. done in that chain. And as you grow, you know, other producers prom approach you and they'll say, well, could you do an album or we have a project and stuff. Right. And so you managed to do other albums, mm -hmm. you know, like namely I did an album with Sax and Arak Records, you know, and, and so forth, you know. Uh, many producers will, will approach you for that on that basis and so you end up making quite a few albums and stuff. Okay, yeah. so you said the first song that put you on the map, Be My Lady. Can, yeah. you, can, can you give me a little piece of that song that made um, Peter Honingale uh, a household name shopping. in London? Let's okay, go with it. If I could give the world to you Heaven knows that I really would now Cause you're like the morning sun that shines so bright In my life Oh, 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 yes Won't you be my lady? Come on now Won't you be my love? That was excellent. So that's, that's just like that a little was, vibe, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that was beautiful. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back with Mr. Honeygale and his wonderful voice. Again, okay. you're watching Pep Talk. Keep it locked. Bless. Hi, everyone. This is Ange Anglad on the set at Pep Talk with Rosie Peppy Park. Stay tuned and keep it on lock. And if you're just joining us, I'm in Croydon, London, speaking with Peter Honeygill and his wonderful voice. He just did Be My Lady before the break. And I'm telling you, I had to take a break because I was getting the goose pimples because it was <laughs> oh so amazing. And we're back, mm -hmm. and he's done 17 albums, yeah. Be My Lady being the song that put him on the map. Talk about some of your favorite songs that you've done throughout the course of your career. Ah, right. Mm. Quite a few. Uh... Don't Wanna Let You Go is one, mm -hmm. you know? Oh, you put me on a tight spot. I'd say <laughs> Perfect Lady is a nice song. Um, and Perfect Lady is close to, entitled, it's close to the, my first song that really launched me, Be My Lady, so there's two songs there. Uh, oh, there's so many. Um, Try Again. Mm -hmm. um, African Tears, definitely, you know? Oh, Let's Stay Together, which is an Al Green cover version that I've done. Beautiful. Um, my Divine, which uh, I, you know, I, I sing songs sometimes, you know, in praise of my Almighty, because the Almighty to me is everything. Mm -hmm. you know? um, yeah, there's so many. I think it's it's difficult to sort of like. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And we're talking about seventeen albums. So yes. <laughs> talk about your latest album. What is it called? And how many tracks do you have on that one? My latest album, which was released a year and a half or so ago, mm -hmm. I have two. One called Reggaeville albums, I should say. Reggaeville and Honey Vibe One. Mm -hmm. Honey Vibe One is a collection of songs that I've done throughout my career time, again, which is about 25 years, mm -hmm. and I've taken stuff from that. That's a 20-track collection. <laughs> but the actual album, um, Reggaeville, is a 14-track mm -hmm. album, and that's got, you know, what are my most current recordings, you know? Um, like that, that has tracks like Sitting in the Park, um, which is the, the old classic, Sitting mm -hmm. in the Park. Uh, let's stay together. Um, again, another tune about the bills and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, um, one about my hometown, Brixton, mm -hmm. or any day in Brixton. Um, Be my lady, which is a, a 2010 updated version of it. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, an array of different tracks there. Okay, yeah. so let's talk about some of your musical influences. Mm. Who are they? Oh wow, gosh, oh, Sly and Robbie. Um, you have um, Sly and Robbie. If I was best to start with Jamaica, Lloyd Parks, mm -hmm. Sly and Robbie, a, 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 a few people. So so many people. I mean, vocalists, Bryce Hammond, Freddie McGregor, 
you know, definitely, you know, it's like I say, the Mighty Diamonds, um, some of the historic people, Delroy Wilson, mm -hmm. Jacob Miller, you know, Bread Bob, obviously. Um, sisters in reggae, you know, uh, uh, Marcia Griffiths, the first lady, with, with enough respect to many of the sisters coming through right. today. Um, you know, Judy Moa, obviously, you know, because of their voice qualities mm -hmm. and stuff, you know, exceptional. JC Lodge is one of my favorite persons. I know she's international because she's sometime here in Jamaica and stuff. Coming back here in the UK, some of my people who I, I, I really love as reggae influences, Bubblers Ogilvy, who is a producer, he's pretty cool. Um, Perkins Records, who, who are doing the stuff with, with um, Stu, Studio One here in the UK. Of course, my own label, um, which was Street Vibes, my crew, you know, um, Fitzroy Blake and everyone. Um, yeah, there is a few people. There's too much to I mention know. if you're kind of... I know, because yeah. that's a lot. But, you know, yeah. when you're doing reggae, that's typical that you would have a lot of influences. Uh, quite, quite a few. Yeah. yeah. Now, do you write your own songs? Majoritively, um, at, at least 85%, and I'd say at least 90% of my songs, uh, I write them myself. Excellent. Yeah. And, and what about collaborations? Um, over mm. the span of your career, who have you collaborated with? Tipa Irie. Um, my most recent collaboration with, with, is with Carol Thompson. Mm. We, have a, we did a song, we did a song, If This Were Was Mine. The, a remake of that song? Yeah, the Lovers Rock version for our album. Okay. So that's good. Uh, again, who, who have I done? Uh, I think, uh, do, you, do you remember? Oh, Tinga Stewart. Tinga Stewart, yeah. Oh, we had a song called Hang On Baby, mm -hmm. you know, back in the day there. And that, that just comes to mind in actual fact. Quite a few people I've had duets with and stuff. Um, me and Paulette Taja on an album I had called um, Back to the Old School, which mm -hmm. is a, we, it was a two-step, R&B two-step album, which I had done, uh, converted into reggae. And um, yeah, Paul Ataja came on board with that. But there's been quite a few. Myself and Dennis Brown, we had a track called uh, Cupid on the Saxons of Ovid. And uh, not the Sam Cooke version, though. This was an original written oh, one. Really? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. That's hot. We got to get that yeah. one from Fred Pep, Mag Pep Files. Yeah, man. Freddie McGregor, we've done stuff with uh, Freddie McGregor at Stingray Studios mm -hmm. here in the UK. Mm, quite a few. OK. So let's talk about your performances. Mm. Um, do you have a memorable performance that just something that just comes to mind that really made you feel good about yourself as an wow. artist? I'm going to be truly honest with you, really honest with you, and I give thanks to the Almighty. You know, I've managed to have many, a lot more really great, you know, performance experiences mm -hmm. more than not. And it's very difficult to distinguish because, you know, it's you you really have a really good time mm -hmm. you know you know the audience treat you well and you treat the audience back well and you get the feedback so I must give thanks for that you can have audiences with about 10 people in there and the vibe that's coming up for the 10 people are just like you yeah. wouldn't swap it for the world and there's just as much you can have a few thousand people in front of you and mm -hmm. the absolute the roar of the crowd coming back to you almost can push you over you know um, so I've, I've, I've had the both experiences, but I think one, we, we developed a, a dance routine on one occasion. When I say we, I have some backing singers that sing with me, some okay. lads called Clearview Harmonics, mm -hmm. and they do the performances. They don't sing on the records, but they do the live performances, the harmony sections. Mm -hmm. And um, we had done a performance at the Royal Festival Hall, and we had about two, two and a half thousand people in front of us. And we, we just developed a new dance routine for a song that uh, we had done. Anyway, we was going through the routine and we did this jump thing where we jumped back. Now, we can't see the audience, but the noise that came up from the stores was like, whoa, you know, it's like the roar went up and we thought, wow, that just blew the place away. <laughs> and so much so, we was hired to play there again from mm -hmm. the same. So that was one memorable because we actually did something on that occasion that maybe kind of like changed the way we was performing, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, it's very good. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, I have one more question mm. before I ask you to tell folks where they can hear more of your music mm. and a little bit about yourself. I know you do music like 24 7, but yeah. you also have something else in the works. Yeah, um, at the moment, I, I spent many years in, in making music, producing music, and still do. I mean, even on my offside, I do dub, dub plate recording for many sounds globally, you know. But my, my latest initiative is to be able to harness and get behind the UK mm -hmm. music scene. Um, what that is, is that UK scene didn't really have an inter infrastructure, you know, because like records, the sales of records, the jet stars and all the outlets have, have closed down. 
So everything is much more on the internet now. So it's made it very hard, you know, extra hard for the exponents of UK music to actually get through, get deals and get their tunes out there. So I think really one, one good thing to do to help harness everybody, to get everybody back to one place central is through a, a station, like a radio station. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I began an initiative with some of the colleagues from the music industry. Uh, we called ourselves the AMU Artists and Musicians United. And they've got behind me with this project. And uh, this project is about starting an online radio station mm -hmm. that's going to play 80% UK produced music. Um, and when I say 80% UK produced music, that will be the emphasis on Lovers Rock, UK DJ, UK Roots Music, mm -hmm. um, a chart show, um, and, and, and new music being released because there's a whole huge avenue for that. Uh, again, when I mean UK music, it can be recorded in Jamaica still. But see, some of the stuff that was recorded in Jamaica was released through UK labels. Right, right, right. So that is also inclusive in that as well. Mm -hmm. And we have a huge history here with Jamaican music going back from the 60s. You know, like, you know, obviously um, Desmond Decker, Jimmy Cliff, you know, Baba Marcia, Dave and Ansel Collins, you know, way back. Because they used to enter into the UK charts here. And there's a huge market here that listen to it. Not just the black communities, but also the white communities right. who grew up with it. And the history before reggae with the ska music as well. We, you have a, 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 a lot of English people who grew up with that, you know. So uh, we're going to open those doors again, mm -hmm. and that's what we're going to do. We're going to integrate a lot of that history, that wholesome history, you know, of Jamaican music being released through English shores, and, and what we're doing today with the UK music scene, and, and pushing it through. And I will say, I don't care, I say, in front and behind, we ain't playing no gun tune. <laughs> we ain't playing no slackness tune. Mm -hmm. We ain't playing nothing that's inappropriate for people's listening. You know, it's not suitable. I know there are some people who use reggae music to put their messages across mm -hmm. and, and, and bless them whatever they do. But mm -hmm. for me, no, no, no. There's got to be a lot of integrity behind integrity, our music. Integrity, integrity. Yeah. I love yeah. that. I yeah, love for that. Real. Thank you so much bless for you, being Rosie, a guest. It's been a super pleasure. I mean, I want you to do one more because your voice is so mellow. But before you mm. close us out with okay. that, just tell the folks where they can go to get some of your music and to find out more information about the wonderful Peter Honeygill. Okay, I mean, I mean, it's my bad still. I should have my own website and everything happening. <laughs> but at the moment, you can get me through Google. You can find me through Facebook and MySpace. Uh, but I think you'll find a wealth of information about me on Google. So just put in Peter Honeygill and it should take you there. It should yeah. take you there. And then you're going to take us out <laughs> with a wonderful song. But let me just close out the show. You're watching Pep Talk in your neck of the woods, anywhere you are. Again, we are in 21 Caribbean islands, southern Florida, and all over. Just look for us as well. And my wonderful guest today was Peter Honeygale, a UK <laughs> recording artist based in the UK. And he's going to take us out with his wonderful voice. Thank you for watching. Thank you. I get a change of attitude when I'm near you. It's like the way a sunny day makes it all right. Glad I have found someone who makes my life worth living. You can be sure that I will treat you right. Perfect lady. I don't care what they say, you are my perfect lady. Hey, your love, I can never deny, oh, my baby. There ain't no doubt you bring joy to my life, perfect. Yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are, oh, yes. The morning sun that